the kind of person that this approach works best for is the highly motivated the I think it works absolutely best with that difficult group of people who are have a lot of psychosomatic symptoms mm -hmm. the people that used to be called hysterical that is they have a lot of mind body information flowing but they don't know what to do with it so it comes out in the form of symptoms so with these people I immediately develop it's almost a mantra how I can help them convert their symptoms into signals that uh -huh. their body mind body is trying to and what you tune into that pain and stay with it just for a moment or two and let's see what you begin to experience next let's so how that's how the, yeah. so that's how these symptoms then do become pathways or signals for that's change. Right. So after a while, after all, what is a symptom? In this mind-body point of view, a symptom is a mind-body signal that you have not been paying attention to. So the mind-body has to get louder and louder. Finally, it puts up a megaphone and it throws in so much stimulation. We call it pain or a headache or a stomach ache. But as you tune in with great receptivity, then the messenger doesn't have to shout so loud. So after a while, you just get a little twinge. Oh, maybe I have to start changing my behavior here because I'm doing the same old thing again. So, so the greater the symptoms, the greater the readiness for change? Yes, profoundly. Well, in a few minutes, yeah, we're going to watch you work with, okay. a, with a young woman. Uh, can you let us know what your goals were for this work, kind of to set up? Well, initially, I had no goals because I never met this person. I didn't get any sure. information on the person. But uh, she gave me some goals right in the very first three minutes. I haven't seen the tape, so it happened so soon. I don't even know if it shows on the tape. But very quickly, she indicated to me that uh, she had been through this therapy thing you know, a number of times. I guess I'm the ninth or tenth person mm -hmm. she'd worked with. And she intimated that it was all the same. Uh, Oh, there was one art therapist. That was different. That was fun. But she implied that people gave her a lot of advice or counseling. And it seems like it was stuff imposed from the outside. So that already told me that an outer counseling, reality-oriented approach was not going to work with her. So it immediately gave me my first cue. Ah, I'm gonna, I wonder if I need to do inner work imagery, so-called hypnosis, dream work. Mm -hmm. So that gave me a little set. Uh, then I would say the, I began exploring gingerly, you know, what is going to be the access to her inner world since the outer structures weren't working so well. Uh, and you'll see I gingerly try this approach, I try that approach. Finally, almost in desperation, I said, well, would you say that you're a spiritual person? Uh, at that point, you know, I've tried a number of things and I'm almost in desperation because, <laughs> because when you use the word spiritual, it implies for a lot of people a sense of wonder and opening. So that's, mm -hmm. however, even here, it turned out that she, yes, she prayed and I saw very quickly she had a very conventional idea of spirit. It wasn't until after an interview that you told me that her father was mm -hmm. actually a minister. So she got a very strong dose of mm -hmm. how it's supposed to be rather than her own original experience. But it, I think it was just a little bit before, a little bit at, probably a little after that, she talked about uh, she had these skills in mathematics, and I expressed a sense of wonder. That was something new about her. And then she gave me my opening. She says, but you know, I don't have any imagination. I thought, oh, great. That's exactly what I need. <laughs> so, so what would you call, what you'd call these are accessing cues? Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Is that like the first step of an intervention, the accessing? That's right. I call it the basic accessing questions. Okay, what, what happens? What's the second part that we should look for then? Okay. Well, when she comes out with this, I don't have the imagination, that was my cue to immediately jump in and say, okay, would you be interested in exploring some new approaches where we can explore the possibilities? And of course, who's going to say no? <laughs> right. And then I not a minister's daughter for sure. <laughs> uh, that's right. They do try to comply, mm -hmm. and you they utilize please. that their compliant outer orientation. But you try to utilize it in a way that's unique and different. For example, to ask someone to look at their hands almost as if they've never seen them before. Of course, that's an indirect suggestion for dissociation, but they don't know that it immediately starts evoking a different kind of a mental set. 
and do they feel the same or different? Well, people don't usually tune into that. So I ask a series of basic accessing questions that the conscious mind does not know how to answer. The only way an answer can come mm. is by tuning into the body, tuning into the body sensations, feelings, mm -hmm. in a new kind of a way, a kind of an original way. So I have many novel approaches. Mm -hmm. This novelty is what evokes that sense of wonder. Remember that sense of wonder turns mm -hmm. on the immediate early genes within a couple of minutes, and that starts the process of a new a cell new development. And new learning. New learning. That's okay. essence. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, this should be should be interesting. Yeah. Let's let's get to okay. it. Okay.